two transactions T1 and T2 are given as T1 R1 of X W1 of X R1 of Y W1 of Y and T2 R2 of Y W2 of Y R2 of Z W2 of Z where R I of V denotes a read operation by transaction T I on a variable V and W I of V denotes a write operation by transaction T I on a variable V. The total number of conflict serializable schedules that can be formed by T1 and T2 is dash. So this is a question com coming from DBMS topics regarding transactions. In this question, they are asking us about conflict serializability. So if you don't understand what conflict serializability means, please refer to the video lecture on the topic before trying to solve this question. So let's take a look at this here. So transaction T1 and T2 I have written here like this for understanding it better. So T1 has read of X, write of X, read of Y and then write of Y. It's reading X, writing X, after that reading Y, it's writing Y. Similarly T2 has reading Y, writing Y, after that reading Z, writing Z. So they are asking us about conflict serializability. So conflict serializability, any conflict occurs when two transactions are either reading and writing on the same data object. So if you look at here, T1 is reading and writing X, after that reading and writing Y. Similarly, T2 is reading and writing on Y, after that reading and writing on Z. So if you see, data item X is operated upon only by T1 and data item Z is operated upon only by T2. So the common data item is Y only between T1 and T2. So we only need to worry about conflict serializability for the data item Y. Now for two transactions T1 and T2, there are two conflict serializable schedules possible. One is T1 and T2 and second one is T2 after that T1. So we look at the first one, the first serial schedule that is T1, T2. Now how many ways are there in which we can write these operations such that T1 and T2 is conflict serializable to the serial schedule T1 and then T2. So if it should be conflict serializable to T1 and then T2, the conflict objects or the conflict operation should appear in the same order in our new schedule. So in T1 and T2 the conflict operation which is read of Y, write of Y, then read of Y, write of Y will appear in this order only. That is the first transaction reads Y, then writes Y and after that only this should appear. So the second transaction reads Y and then writes Y. So these four operations should appear in this order in a schedule that is conflict serializable to the serial schedule T1 and then T2. So if these four should appear in this order, let's try to assign the rest of the operations to this schedule. So first read one of Y and then write one of Y should appear. So if you look at T1 here, read one of Y, write one of Y appears here. And before that only read of X and write of X happens. So before this, read one of X and write one of X should happen. Similarly, read 2 of y, write 2 of y is appearing here. That is read 2 of y, write 2 of y. After that only read 2 of z and write 2 of z should appear. Meaning read 2 of z and write 2 of z should appear after this. So meaning there is only one way of doing it. There is only one transaction which will have these four in this order. That is read 1 of x, write 1 of x, read 1 of y, write 1 of y, read 2 of y, write 2 of y, read 2 of z, write 2 of z. Which is same as the serial schedule T1, T2 only. Now this has only one schedule possible. Now let's look at the other serial schedule that is T2 and then T1. So if it appears like this T2 and then T1 which means that read 2 of y and write 2 of y should appear here and after that only read 1 of y and write 1 of y should appear. So if we assign these four like this let us try to assign the rest of the operations and let us see how many possibilities are there. So read 2 of y, write 2 of y appears here meaning after this read 2 of z and write 2 of z should appear. Similarly read 1 of y, write 1 of y appears here meaning that only after this should read 1 of x and write 1 of x should appear. So let us try to assign first read 2 of z and write 2 of z to this and after that we will try to assign read 1 of x and write 1 of x and then we will count all the possibilities. Okay. So initially I will write these four. Now the order of these four should not change. Meaning read 2 of y, write 2 of y and after that read 1 of y and write 1 of y. So these four should follow this particular order only. And after that we will be trying to assign read 2 of z and write 2 of z 
to the gaps here. So how many gaps are there if I assign these four in this order? Read two of z and write two of z should appear on after this only. So we'll start from here. This is one gap. We can put both, both of them here. This is another gap between read one of y and write one of y. We can put both of them here. And there is one more gap that is after this two. So read two of z and write two of z. I can put both of them in this gap as well. So we have three gaps here. Let us try how to assign these two items in those three gaps. One is that we assign both of them to the gap between this and this. So we should start only after this. Okay. So we'll assign these two in this gap. That is one possibility. Another possibility is we'll assign read two of z to this gap. Write two of z should appear after this. And write two of z I will assign to this gap between read one of y and write one of y. The third possibility is read two of z I will keep here only and write two of z I will assign to this gap which is what I have written here that is after these two I am assigning write two of z. Similarly for this part there is the other possibility is that we assign nothing to this gap we assign one to this gap and the other one to this gap that's what I have given here read two of y write two of y read one of y these three I keep it here the first one I assign to this gap that is read two of z and the second one I assign after this there was one more way to do it keeping read two of z here that is we keep read two of z here write two of z here I, I could have assigned to this gap and after that I do write one of y and the final way of doing it is both of this I assign to this gap then meaning read two of y write two of y read one of y write one of y and after that I assign read two of z and write two of z. So these are the six ways in which I can assign these two in these three gaps. Now our task is not over we need to assign r1 of x and r write 1 of x as well. So in each of these if you take a look here read 1 of x and write 1 of x should appear before read 1 of y and write 1 of y. So let's take the first one here. So before read 1 of y and write 1 of y we need to assign read 2 of z and write 2 of z. So there are two items here and how many gaps are there? This is one gap. This is another gap. This is another gap. This is another gap. This is another gap. Okay. There are five gaps here and then we need to assign two items in this order. So if you count there are 15 ways of doing that. I'll show you how. One is I assign both here. That is one possibility or I assign one here and then second one here or I assign one here and the third one here or I assign one here and the fourth one here or I assign one here and the fifth one here. So an easy way of counting it is just take a look at it like this. The left one if I assign to the first gap then there are five gaps possible five gaps available to assign the second one. So if the first one I assign to the first gap there are five gaps left meaning five series we get. If the first one I assign to the second gap then for the second one I have four gaps left. One, two, three and four because the second one should appear to the right side of this one right. So I can't put the second one in this gap. So if you put the second first one here there are one, two, three, four gaps available for the second one which will add another four. Similarly if I put this one in this gap the third gap I have three gaps left to put the second one meaning it will add three additional series. If I assign the first one to this gap, it will be there will be two gaps left to assign the second one that will add two. If I assign the first one to this gap, there is only one more gap left to add the last one. So that will add one. Meaning there are 15 possibilities. So if there are five gaps here, there are 15 ways of assigning these two to the gaps. Similarly, let us look, take a look at this one. If you take a look at this one, we need to assign to the left side of R1 of Y. There are 1, 2, 3, 4. You can do counting similarly. So you will find that there are 10 ways of assigning this. Just like I did here. There are 10 ways of assigning this. If you look at this one, there are 1, 2, 3, 4 gaps available. Meaning again, 10 ways of assigning. If you look here, there are 3 gaps available. That will be 6 ways of assigning. Here there are three gaps available. Again that is six ways of assigning. Here also there are three gaps available. That's again six ways of assigning R1 and W1X. Now we have assigned everything. Let us count. 
this is 15 plus 10 plus 10 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 if you add everything you will get a total of 53 so there are 53 schedules possible which is conflict serializable to the serial schedule t2 t1 similarly for t1 t2 there was one more possible so the total is 53 plus 1 that is 54 54 is the answer to this question